this. Rikant, am I audible? Yes, Eric. You are audible. Uh, yeah, Eric, you are audible. Okay, so good morning, everybody. My name is Eric Mohandas. I am here to present the technical working of ChatGPT. So first, I will start by the introduction of ChatGPT. Okay, so ChatGPT basically is a language model uh, which was uh, developed by OpenAI in year 2019. Uh, ChatGPT is a combination of machine learning and natural language processing. NLP is used to understand and phrase the sentences and machine learning is used to give the response. Uh, it is the largest lang language model till date and it is the largest language to get and it is trained on more than 175 billion parameters. Uh, so the basic de definition of language model is that it is a uh, it, it is built on large corps of languages. Uh, it is trained on everything that is available on the web, articles and many more. Uh, the size of large language model is so big that it needs more than 8,000 uh, gigabytes of memory to train it. Uh, so the basic functioning of a large language model is next token prediction and mass language modeling. So next token prediction basically means uh, it has to predict the next word. So these are basically nothing but the uh, normal probability distribution of the word. So whichever word has the highest probability distribution, that word will be next uh, in next token prediction. And Marx language modeling basically means that there will be a missing uh, word, missing token in a sentence. And the model has to predict which words fit in there the best. So it, it again work on the same like which word has the highest probability to fit them. Then I would like to talk about the capabilities of ChatGPT. It is capable of text generation, text completion, question answer, summarization, text translation, conversation AI, because ChatGPT's biggest strength is that it, it gives you answer in a more conversation way, like a human and not like a robot. Uh, sentiment analysis, name entity recognition, parts of speech tagging. Uh, so what is GPT and self-attention? GPT was introduced by OpenAI. So the first GPT was introduced in 2018. GPT-2 was introduced in 2019 and GPT-3 in 2022. Uh, so this is the timeline of chat GPT from 1 to 3. As you can see that it has evolved a lot from uh, 117 parameters to 1.5 billion parameters to 175 billion parameters. And also the dimension has changed accordingly. And it has been trained a lot in ChatGPT 3. ChatGPT 3 is now using 3.5 architecture, 3.5 transform architecture. Uh, and it is trained on large, large data. ChatGPT 3 is trained on languages like English, Hindi, Marathi, uh, even foreign languages like Spanish or any other language. And it is also trained on programming languages like, such as Python, Java, CSS, HTML, and many more. Uh, now coming to self-attention, self-attention is basically a method used to give weightage to the more important words in a sentence. It understands the relationship between a single word and the whole sentence. And it gives weight according to the uh, it gives weight accordingly, and that weight is reflected when it's generating a sentence. So weights which uh, words which have more weights have ha higher meaning. So that's how self attention is used. And ChatGPT three uses multi word attention because it is very difficult for self attention to go from uh, method step one to step four again and again. So it uses multi word attention, multi word attention. Uh, it gives parallelly. So the sentences are given parallelly and the output are also given parallelly. And the 
and self attention helps with uh, converting the sentences into tokens tokenized form uh, so now we will jump into how the chat gpt model was trained and how it is been used so basically a, a chat gpt gpt model pretend model is is we have it over here and we use a prompt prompt is nothing but a user input so from that uh, trained uh, data the, the the data on which the model is trained will uh, take one of that trained question and we give it to the supervised fine tuning model sft uh, so the label labeler is is responsible for giving the questions and is also responsible for the desired outcome uh, so after giving it to the labeler it it is now in a supervised form and then it is given to the uh, sft model sft model then upgrades the parameters upgrades the parameters and then it is given in the next step as we can see the same question has been given to the sft model as if and as we know the chat gpt will give a new response to a new every time the same question is asked so we gave that same question to sft model and it has generated four text which is not visible over here it has given the four text for the same questions and then the reward model comes in play so now the labeler here is responsible for ranking it from the worst to best it is ranking from 0 to 7 0 meaning the answer the output is very bad and 7 meaning the output is very good and as we all know that chat gpt doesn't give us toxic answers so whichever answer is like toxic that will come at the least like 0 and whichever outcome is the best will come at 1 a uh, 7 from 0 to 7 and the answers which are having more facts and more relevant and high quality answers will be ranked 7 so that uh, arrangement is then been sent to uh, reward model this is the formula of reward model over here k represents the number of outcome over here we have two out four outcomes so uh, over here the value of k would be 4 and this is basically the, the two in a reward model we don't give all the questions and all the answers because it is difficult for it to understand so we give one uh, prompt which is the users input and one out response to it like it, this is one question and one answer is given minus the other question and minus answer is given in a pair so the model is not confused and over here we can see that uh, yw has is the preferred outcome like it it gave the best response so that is a preferred outcome and rest is not the preferred outcome so it will give more weightage to that that is how uh, the reward model works and coming to reinforcement learning over here we take a new data set a new question a new response and we give that to the trained model so this is or oh, this over here is basically the sft model which was fine tuned before and this is the reward model so when we give the chat gpt a new question which is which is which is which on which it has not been trained it then sends it to sft model sft model word by word predicts the next outcome for that and that outcome is given to reward model and the uh, output of the reward model we get and that is again given back to the sft model this is how the outcomes this is how we get the best answer from chat gpt because uh, it does this back, back propagation again and again till we get the law till the loss is uh, minimum so this is the formula for reinforcement learning over here zero is basically the policy parameter uh, so pop which is uh, proximal policy optimization uh, it basically does that it increases the reward reward function giving the maximum reward to the model and uh, and which gives the less loss function where the loss is minimum and the reward is maximum so over here zero represents nothing but the parameter e represents uh, whenever a prompt is given and when we have, whenever we get a response the whole response is basically uh, denoted as e 
the whole response is denoted as e in time step r is the ratio of new parameters uh, the outcome of the new parameters upon the outcome of the old parameters and uh, over here this function is used uh, is used to uh, maximize the learning rate because if the learning rate is too high it is difficult for the model to learn properly that is why we use the minimum uh, the values of r and at is very high so we need to minimize it as much as possible and this steps goes again and again and again till the outcome is uh, till the reward is maximum and the uh, loss is minimum that's how we give get the best answers uh, thank you if any questions Can you explain more layman term as to how the reward is increased and the loss is minimized? Uh, it uses gradient ascent formula, uh, which I have not mentioned in the, uh, in the presentation. Uh, it basically does that. Uh, it gives the, it gives weight to the output, which is more relevant using the reward model, which I have explained over here. So the output, which has a very bad quality answer and which is very toxic will come at the very back and which is uh, the best answer for a particular question that will come ahead. So that way this process will go on and on till the parameters has been upgraded. Till the parameters are upgraded to such a point that that the output is the best output and that is then been given to us as an as a answer as a response. Can you explain this formula in a better and easier way? Okay, this formula is basically to maximize the uh, output as it is a reinforcement learning. That means that the output which was given before it has to give up better formula to that. So over here, the theta represents the policy parameters. Policy parameters is basically uh, uh, gives the outcome which has the best reward. And E represents whenever a response is given, like the, the response over here in the previous slide, we have taken four response. So at the time it will take one response and uh, T takes the one response and E is basically the questions. Uh, so over here, the prompt is used that uh, write a story about frogs. So over here, E represents the story of the frog. T represents how many time the response was given. And uh, the value of R is basically the new parameters upon the old parameters. So when the previous output was given, it had a different pa parameters. And when it again went back to the SFT model, the parameters was upgraded where the gradient was changed, where the reward model was giving the best outcome. And the AT represents uh, the estimate advantage of time. And this formula is used to minima uh, minimize uh, the learning rate of the model. Because if the learning rate is too high, it will skip uh, skip it and it will go ahead. So that formula is used that and we take the minimum because these two values give a big outcome which is more than value of one. So we take the minimum of that. Okay. 
Okay, so the reward model, model uh, the SFT model, we gave the same question four times. These are the four questions because as we know, chat GPT responds uh, differently to the same question every time. So we gave the same questions four times. We have the four options over here. And the reward model does that is it takes the number of responses that is K represents the number of response that is four and it gives it to the model. It takes the log of it and we're given and uh, so the model does not get confused. We give one uh, prompt and one re response in a pair. So each prompt and response is given in a pair. And as we know that uh, in all the four, we have one output, which is the best. And that is the preferred output over here. So it uh, changes the parameters uh, accordingly. Uh, Self-attention, as we know that chat GPT is built on transformer. Transformer comes into play when we have large uh, sequence of data. So as we know that the uh, normal self-attention takes one, uh, one sequence, one token at a time. Uh, that's why we used a multi-head uh, multi attention. It parallelly, parallelly gives the output of, uh, converts the output and gives us the response. Uh, that also helps with the computation power because it is very difficult to go one, uh, go from step one to four again and again. So multi does it simultaneously for all the sequence. Why the GPT performance better than the models? Okay. Uh, the previous models, the main problem with that was that it gave toxic response and the output was not up to the mark as we expect. Uh, so over here, Ch chat GPT uses labeler as I explained over here. It is responsible for the input and the output. So if, if the output is very bad, the reward model will uh, rank it at minimum that is zero and maximum is seven. Though so if the model is uh, giving a very bad response, like a very toxic response, it will come to zero. And if the model is giving a very uh, high quality answers, it will give the value seven. My question was quite different. Question was why transformer efficiency is superior to the older models like LSTM or RLM? Achha, LSTM, RLM. Uh, because those models did not work on a large sequence of data, it used to break, it used it didn't understand the relationship of words in a sentence. Why? Uh, because it and how transfer is able to. Uh, because it is using encoder and decoder, encoder is responsible for converting the uh, for responsible for understanding and also responsible for giving the weight to the words to the tokens which are more important, uh, which is not used by the other models. So, how the parallelization is happening in the uh, formulator? Uh, it, it takes place in the decoding. While decoding, uh, it has, uh, it was in Bhavya Shetty's presentation. It takes place in the decoding process. It takes the whole sentence and it gives in the decoding and it decodes uh, simultaneously and not one word at a time. And that's the limitation with LF. Yes, sir. That's why transformer came into play. And uh, the chat GPT can take up to 2,400 tokens. Uh, which is which uh, which has come uh, approx to one thousand seven hundred words. What do you mean by it? tokens? Uh, tokens also means word, but it also includes symbols and other things like full stop, unnecessary things. Thank you, sir.